Hi, this is Sarit Schwetzer, and welcome to the It Is Taught podcast, a podcast devoted to the teachings of Rabbi Schneir Zalman of Liadi, as recorded in his most famous work, the Tanya. My hope for this show is to make these teachings accessible and relatable to the average person, regardless of prior Jewish education or affiliation. The episodes follow the prescribed daily study portions and are meant to serve as practical lessons in how to live your life as your true self and develop an authentic and powerful relationship with your Creator. I have personally experienced the effects the study of this work has had on me, and I'm excited to share what I can of this knowledge with you. So please join me on this journey of learning, self-growth, and connection with your Source. Hi, and welcome to the It Is Top podcast. This is episode 119 for the 18th of Adar Base in a leap year. So I don't want to get too dark today, but we have talked about depression in the past. And so I'd like to bring it up again now and maybe even to the furthest extent, suicidal ideation, God forbid, when people start to have suicidal thoughts. So what's really going on there? What do people tend to say when they or, or think when they are in this state? Obviously, I don't want to dismiss the fact that there's often chemical components going on and people who are severely depressed or suicidal should definitely seek professional health in that manner. But at the same time, I would like to delve in a little bit today the kind of surface psychology of what tends to go on with people who are feeling depressed and maybe for all of us who tend to get in these states every so often. So while on the surface, it might seem like what depressed people are saying and thinking is that they are not feeling very good about themselves. Maybe they have a low self-esteem. Maybe they feel ugly. Maybe they feel stupid. We talked about learned helplessness. Nothing is going well for them in the world and these kind of things. And often the way people try to get people out of a depression is by giving them encouragement, reminding them about how great they are, how beautiful they are, how smart they are, and all of these things. So what we're going to be learning about today and kind of the Tani's approach to this is that there's actually something much deeper going on. And if you really listen to people who are depressed or even God forbid suicidal, often what they're really saying is that they're saying that they feel like they are useless. They're saying that they feel like they are worthless, that the world doesn't need them, that nobody needs them, that there's no point to their life. Their life is meaningless and it doesn't matter if they're here or, or there. There's an apathy there about everything, a certain nihilism. And so to Today's Tanya kind of provides an answer to this. And the, and what we're going to be, the lesson of today's Tanya, what we're going to be learning about today is something really, really, really profound. So we're still in the middle of chapter 37 in which we've been learning about the purpose of the of creation and how the purpose of creation is ultimately fulfilled through all of all Jewish people keeping Torah and mitzvahs and those kind of things. But it didn't really get individualistic until today. Today, we're really going to focus on the individual because up until now, a person can still kind of think to themselves, okay, so there's this like collective Jewish people out there and God kind of wants all the Jewish people to keep his Torah and mitzvahs. And when all the Jewish people keep his Torah and mitzvahs, good, the world will be uh, fulfilled and God's mission will be accomplished down here on earth. That's great. But who am I? I'm just this lowly person maybe I'm not really necessary for this plan. Like it's kind of like if let's say there's a bunch of people who are setting up for a party and everybody's doing something else to set up for the party. You might get lost in the corner kind of thinking to yourself, I don't really know what I'm supposed to do here. Everybody here seems to have everything handled. I could probably just leave and (laughs) things will go on as usual. I'm sure the party will work out. I'm sure everything will work out. Like what, what do they really need me here for? Right? So what we'll learn today is that we really do need you and we need every single one of you and for real. And this isn't something we just say to placate a person and to make them feel better, but it's really true. So to explain this, we've already learned about how really the entire purpose of creation is for the Jewish people. Yes, I know that might sound really egocentric, but this is what Torah teaches. This is what the Tanya teaches. And so by extension, what this really means is that the entire vitality of the world is dependent on us. It's dependent on the Jewish people. It receives its vitality from us. We can either be channeling godliness into the world in a direct way, or we can be blocking the flow of energy, God forbid, by not doing what God wants us to do. So 
We've also learned about how the Jewish people, the Jewish souls, are divided in a general sense into 600,000 general souls. Today, we'll talk about how these 600,000 general souls are actually further subdivided into 600,000 smaller kind of soul sparks. And even within those soul sparks, there's different levels. There's the level of the neshama, the level of the ruach, the level of the nefesh, different aspects of the soul. So this is what makes up all of the entirety of all the millions of Jewish souls in the world. And so now if we really think about this idea, what we can understand from this is that since the vitality of the world comes from the Jewish people, then the vitality of the world is really also subdivided in this way into these different sparks, into these different 600,000 through 600,000 and different levels and those kind of things. So what this means and what this translates as is that every single one of us is an individual soul and there is no, even though we all do, are interconnected through these soul groups and things like that, on a, on a sub level, when you start subdividing the souls, each soul is unique and distinct and individual. And every single individual unique soul spark has a unique portion of the world that is its own and a unique portion of the world, which is totally and utterly dependent on that particular spark, which means, and this is very intense is that you and me and every single Jewish person out there has a very, very specific soul mission that is extremely particular and extremely individualistic to, to you or to me or to whoever it is. And that your particular portion of the world very much dependent upon you for its vitality. So the world really does need you. It's not just, it's not going to be okay with everybody else. Every single one of these individual sparks is very, very necessary to keep the world alive and to ultimately bring the world into its most complete manifestation. So let's get straight into the text and maybe that will help to really concretize these ideas a little bit more. So the altar Rebbe says that the collectivity of the Jewish people which is the 600,000 souls, neshamos to be specific, individual 600,000 souls are the, in the collectivity of the vitality of the collectivity of the world. So again, so these 600,000 collective souls are the collectivity of the vitality of the world itself. Why? Because this is why the world was created. So the world was created for these 600,000 souls. And each one of these 600,000 souls, these 600,000 collective souls, contains and is related to the vitality of one aspect of the world. So the world too is also divided up into 600,000 parts. And each 600,000 soul is related to one 600,000th of the world. So I hope that makes sense. And this particular aspect of the world this 600,000th part of the world is dependent upon the animal soul in order to become elevated to God. So there's this interconnectedness between our animal souls and the world. So meaning to say that when we utilize different things in the world for our bodies and for our souls, for our animal souls to serve God. So for example, when we eat and when we drink and these kind of things, our homes and all of the things we use in the world, like the different tools we use in the world, when we use these things in order to serve God, then these objects that we're using to serve God become elevated in this particular way. And so each one of us has like a portion of the world that is our portion to elevate to God. And then the ultra goes on and explains this more like sub bigger subdivision aspect that's taking place where he says that, but these 600,000 particular souls are just soul roots and every root to further subdivides into 600,000 sparks where each spark is one particular neshama, one particular soul. And then not only that, this is similarly the case with the nefesh and the ruach, which are other levels of the soul that are in each world of the four worlds, which are Attilus, Bria, Etira, and Asiya. So now's not the time to get into like a fully detailed account of all of these things of the the four worlds I kind of talked about it before and the three levels of the soul but the basic point that the ultra rabbi is trying to bring out here is that this is why we have when we look in the world there, there's more than 600,000 Jews and there's it's been this way for quite a while but this is because these 600,000 
souls are merely soul roots that get further subdivided and further subdivided depending on levels and worlds and different aspects and all kinds of different different things like that so that's the end of the section today so the basic idea again to sum it up is this basic idea that every single one of us has a particular portion of the world that is related to our particular soul and just as the different souls of the jewish people are divided and subdivided and subdivided into particular particular sparks the world is also subdivided in this way and there's an interrelationship going on and so Every single one of us is very much needed because the vitality of the world is dependent on the vitality of the Jewish people because the world was created for us. So every single one of us, me, you, everybody else, we all have an individual spark of our soul that's related to an individual part of creation that we were put here to elevate. And the way that we elevate it is by ut utilizing the world for godly purposes. So when we utilize the food we come in contact with, the drink we come in contact with, the homes we come in contact with, all the different things we contact in our on, during our time here on earth, that elevates these things in the world. So if you really think about it, it's like we there's this idea in Judaism that everything is in the hands of heaven except for fear of heaven. So a lot of our lives were really not our choice. Where we were born, we didn't choose that. Who we were, which family we were born into, we didn't choose that. Even where we live right now, it might seem like it was our choice, but ultimately it wasn't. The jobs we have, who we marry even, all of these things really are th are things that were put into our lap, put into our periphery even if we say that it was our choice to a certain extent the choices that we had in different times and moments and opportunities that we had in our lives these were all given to us by god so what we do have a choice to do is that these is, is what we do with these things so these objects that were put into our periphery put into our lives into our world this is god's way of telling us these things are part of your soul sparks these things are part of your world, are part of the aspect of the world that is related to your soul spark, and you have the obligation to elevate these things. So now it can give us a really strong sense of meaningfulness in our in our lives. So it's no longer about how good looking we are, how smart we are, those kind of things. It's about looking around the world and looking at the objects in our world and in our lives and realizing that these things are not random and these things have been placed in front of us for a purpose because they are related to our particular mission down here, our particular soul. And we have the obligation and the responsibility to vitalize these things and to reveal the inherent godliness in these things by using, using these objects for godly purposes. So I know that's quite intense, but that's the message of today. And uh, it's it can be quite encouraging, I think, for people who maybe lose sight with having a sense of mission or having a sense of purpose here. And we will continue tomorrow with this chapter. It's going to keep going for a little while and I'll speak to you then. Thanks for listening to the It Is Top podcast hosted by Sarit Switzer. This podcast is dedicated in loving memory of my maternal grandfather, Abraham Yitzhak Ben Binyamin Cohen of Blessed Memory. Music by Shoshana. If you enjoyed this episode and would like to support the show, please share it with others and subscribe on YouTube, Apple iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And make sure to leave us a five-star review. To find out more about the It Is Taught project, including more information on my soon-to-be-published book, please visit our website, itistaught.com. To catch the latest from me, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Looking forward to speaking with you tomorrow. And until then, have a great day.